Hello and welcome, my name is John Strand and in this video we're gonna be talking about Tripwire Honey Ports. Now, this is a lab that's used in ADHD. This is the virtual machine that we use in my classes that we teach at Wild West Hacking Fest and also at Black Hat. But in this video, we're gonna be talking about how you can create a port on your computer system that as soon as an adversary interacts with that port, it'll automatically blacklist the IP address of said attacker. Now, in this particular situation, as always, all of the usage information is in this file on the desktop called adhdusage.html. We're using annoyance and specifically we're looking at honey ports. Now, as I mentioned, the honey port is designed so that if an adversary actually interacts with a specific port, it's automatically going to blacklist the attacker's IP address. Now, it's very common for people to freak out about this and say, well, an attacker can simply spoof a connection and then it would blacklist and DOS your entire environment. That's not at all how that works. It's not, it's not how any of this works. It's just insane. Let me explain why. If you're looking at TCP IP, the TCP IP three-way handshake involves me sending you a SYN packet, all right? I'm going to send you a SYN packet, and if that port's open, you're going to respond back with a SYN ACK. Now, there's these things called initial sequence numbers that are 32 bits long. Now, what that means is there's like 4. Point, I think 72 or 4.27 billion and change possible values for that. Now, I send you a SIN with an initial sequence number. You acknowledge that initial sequence number by incrementing it by one, and then you start another sequence number, and then I acknowledge that sequence number by one, and then we communicate yet again through a series of acts. What, what does this mean? This means if an attacker was going to try to spoof a live system, they would have to spoof that system, and they would have to guess a 32-bit number on the fly before that system that they're spoofing responds back the reset. Point is, it's really hard to do. Not impossible, it's just mathematically improbable to do. Because this particular scenario with honey ports, they only trigger in a full established connection to the port. So let's get started. Once again, we're following the instructions on ADHD. I'm going to be using the terminal for this as always. And I'm going to CD into the opt directory. Once again, following the instructions right there. Let me zoom in. So we're going to CD into opt honey ports uh, cross platform. This is the one written by Paul Azadorian of Security Weekly. Then once we are in honey ports, um, we're actually going to run the version 04a.py. So we go Python 2 and we're going to do dot forward slash honey ports and we do dot version 4.a.py and we hit enter. Now, as soon as I hit enter, it's going to throw an error. Specifically, it's asking for a port. Now, the cool thing about this is it means that honey ports in the script that Paul created is flexible. We can create any port that we want for it to actually listen. So if I hit up arrow, I'm going to give it the port 2222. Once again, totally not creative. Um, I've got to give it the minus P. There we are. And now it's listening on port 2222. I also made another mistake. Once again, so, so, so many mistakes, y'all. So I'm gonna kill this again, and I'm gonna run it as root. And the reason why is what Honeyports does is as soon as somebody makes a connection, it is going to create a rule in IP tables. And in order to create a rule in IP tables, one must be root. So now I'm running sudo. We got Python 2, honeyports.py. We have the port. Let's connect to it. I'm going to open up another terminal. And I'm going to simply netcat to port 2222. 2, 2. Go to 127.0.0.1 on port 2222. I hit enter, it says thank you for connecting. Now, if I kill this and I try to connect again, you can see it doesn't work. See, just the connection is dead. That is because this system now is blacklisted. So if I become root really quickly, quick as unto a bunny and or a gazelle, and I do IP tables, become root. Oh, I am already root. Let's go IP tables minus L. It's going to list out the IP table rules. And if we check the input chain right here, 
you can see that localhost.com, as soon as localhost.com tries to make a connection to this computer system, it's going to reject with an ICMP port unreachable message, which is just a fun way to switch protocols and mess. Look, it's, it's TCP IP humor. At least I think it's funny. Um, but it's going to basically reject and drop any traffic coming from that particular computer system. We can also see over here within Honeyports that it did create the rule. We can do P and it'll print the rules and uh, we can ultimately kill them and we can actually flush the rules as well. So we do IP tables minus F and it's going to flush any of the rules that were created. So now if I list them, you see there are no input rules anymore. So we deleted that specific rule. Now, once again, I really wanna reiterate that this will not break your environment. An attacker is not gonna show up and start spoofing ports from all or IP addresses from everywhere and crash your entire network. That's not how this works because of the magic of the TCP IP three-way handshake. But some people will say, but what about Kevin Mitnick and Satomo Shimamura? Great question. With Kevin Mitnick and his attack years ago, you should really research it at the Takedown website. Um, what Kevin Mitnick did was this attack against a weak protocol um, that was wide open to the network, and it was a weak sequence number prediction, and he was able to DOS the system he was trying to spoof. Um, gets into a lot of weirdness about that specific scenario, but just suffice to say, something that happened in the 90s is not gonna happen on your network, at least, more than likely, we hope. Once again, please check out Wild West Hacking Fest, Black Hills Information Security, and ActiveCountermeasures.com. And also check out Enterprise Security Weekly with Paul, myself, and Matt every single Wednesday. Thank you so much, and we'll see you in the next video. This episode was brought to you by Black Hills Information Security, specializing in pen testing, red teaming, threat hunting, webcast, open source tools, and blogs. It was also brought to you by AI Hunter from Active Countermeasures. The AI stands for actual intelligence. Need a threat hunting solution for the network? Check out AI Hunter. It is also brought to you by Wild West Hackenfest, currently offering conferences in San Diego and Deadwood, South Dakota. To check out the schedule and the speaker lineup, check out wildwesthackenfest.com.